I wanted to share my top favorite practice that I do in the art classroom to calm the kids down. And this is something I do at the beginning of every class. It just really helps make the switch, I think, from whatever they've been doing in their classroom. So I came up with this during my first year of teaching. The kids at my first school were so excited to be in art. Um, the energy level was just crazy and I needed a way to calm them down so that I could say anything to them. And it's really served me well. Another need that I had at that time, and I kind of feel like it's just a universal need that we all have in art class, is that kids' drawing skills need a little more practice. So I combined those two things and mindfulness and created a practice that has really worked well. So at the beginning of the year, we do a sketchbook and the one constant is that it has their name on it. In the past, I've bought them at Sketch for Schools. They have really good ones. This year, new school, way more kids, less budget. Um, so we made some and these have worked honestly just as good. This is my basic setup for when kids come into the classroom, their sketchbooks are on their seat. They do have assigned seats. In the past, I've moved them every quarter. This year, I'm new at the school and just getting to know everybody. So I just kept everybody in the same spot all year and just kind of tweaked it. It's been helpful for me, I think, for learning names. I had a bunch of this colored paper, this colored copy paper. So we use that just kind of to get rid of it just a normal piece of drawing paper. It's actually like the paint white paper. So first day of school, we're making our sketchbooks. I'm learning about the kids, learning their names. Second day of school or of art, either we're working more on the sketchbooks, just depending on what sketchbook was involved that year, or we start learning about how to draw and we cover all the drawing basics. We do some fun things like blind contour. Who doesn't love doing that and get a kick out of that? So we'll do usually do blind contour and I do like different times, you know, how much time they have to actually do it. We talk about contour and I have a lot of different objects, still life type objects that we'll look at. We talk about breaking things down into a simple shape. Um, I like to talk about remote control drawing with, and I have do have a video on that, with connecting your eye to your hand. So it's almost like you're tracing the object with your eye and as you're doing tracing the object, you're moving your hand at the same rate. We talk about all those things and really just spend a ton of time practicing, like how do you even draw? And I make a point to say, this is practice. We talk about practice and you know, what other things they practice. And you know, practice is not perfect. If we have a practice that doesn't turn out that good, that's fine. We're just gonna leave it in there. We're not gonna scratch it out. It's just a part of the process. It's just a record to show that we've been trying I do like to put out real still life objects when I have them and when I can. Those are a lot more challenging and you also have a lot more time to manage. So a lot of what I do is I put out these sheets and these can tie in with my lesson. So for example, today we're um, the whole school is doing a novel study on Wish Tree and one of the characters is Bongo the Crow. When kids come into art class, I have an agenda up. It shows what we're gonna be doing. So the big question, you know, because they're like, what are we doing today? Are we painting? Are we doing clay? What are we doing? They see what we're doing on there and then we start right away with the drawing practice. So they don't know maybe the subject, like they don't know I'm gonna have them draw or paint, start painting, sketching for Bongo the Crow, but they're already practicing drawing a crow. And in a way you can also use it as a pretest. I've done that as well before just to kind of see where their skills are at before you do instruction. So kids come in, they go straight to their assigned seat. We talk about the agenda. We do our breathing. We take three deep breaths and we do that in a silly kid way. And I learned these from a mindfulness and education conference once it was great by um, Omega. Butterfly, breathe in, breathe out. We would repeat that three times. Alligator, breathe in, breathe out. Um, Spider-Man. Breathe in, breathe out, shoot your webs in a rain cloud, breathe in, breathe out. And then a lot of times I'll just look at my prompt and we'll, we've done so many of these, I'll make one up or I'll be like, kids, what should we do for a crow? You know, breathe in, breathe out. Or, you know, maybe they'll want to do a call, I don't know. We come up with some crazy ideas of things to do for what's on here. 
Then they open their sketchbook. I start my Pandora classical for studying playlist and they're supposed to be silent for, you know, two to three minutes. Um, sometimes if they're really into it and depending on what I have planned for the day, I'll, I'll give them a little more time. The reason I, why I want the kids to be quiet during the practice is that's their time to really focus on what they're doing. And it really is just a time to practice giving their attention to something and focusing on something. It is a little mindfulness practice, honestly, just the fact that they're focusing on one thing for a minute or two and you know with death threats or whatever no just kidding usually bribery because we have we earn beads at our school so normally I'm like I'm looking for a kid who's drawing quietly to earn beads and that usually will get them settled down I do this for first through third grade kindergarten I've tried it but they really need a lot more foundation on like even how to draw so even more structure than what we set up in the beginning so Normally what I've done with kindergarten is we just start with a guided drawing. It gets them in the practice of what we're kind of moving into or kind of sets them up for that and gives them a lot more basis on how to draw with shapes. So they may work really hard on a small detail and only draw that small detail or they may just do a bunch of quick sketches of as many of the things on the paper as they can and that's fine either way and that is my drawing practice. I hope you enjoy it. Give it a try if you want. Um, let me know questions, comments, concerns. Um, obviously in the past it was easier. I'd usually just do one for the whole week and print them out. Now with COVID, I do one per grade. I laminate them so that they can get disinfected between the next day. It's a ton of work and hassle, but I feel like it's worth it just to get them to come in, calm down. They've got a little bit art out of their system and then they're ready to give me five or 10 more minutes more for instructions, getting their stuff. And then we have the rest of class. Now my classes at this school are 60 minutes long, which is plenty of time, honestly, to have this. And I feel so worth it. My old school, I only had 50 minutes and I still felt like it was critical and like I said, it was really the start of the lesson because we were oftentimes sketching something that we would be doing later in class. To me, so many benefits for doing it. I hope if you give it a try that you enjoy it. Let me know how it goes. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give a like if you like these teacher videos.